Hello and welcome to Ask Chrome. This is the show where you get to ask the Chrome team questions. Uh, my name is Sam Dutton, and I'm a developer advocate on the Chrome team. Hi, I'm Yoav Weiss, also a developer advocate on the Chrome team. I've done a bunch of image-related work in my past, including being heavily involved in the Responsive Images community group. Uh, so I'm super happy yeah. to be here today to talk about images. Yeah, fantastic. We're honored to have Yoav here today, because I know he's done a bunch of really good things with images. So thank you, Yoav. Anyway, uh, if you are watching on YouTube Premiers, uh, you can add questions to the live chat. Um, if you're watching this afterwards, then please just add questions to the comments, and we'll come back to you there. Uh, thank you so much for all the questions uh, on Twitter using the hashtag Ask Chrome. Uh, we've got a bunch of interesting topics to cover from them today. Uh, you know, we can talk about uh, image formats and SEO and compression and a bunch of new capabilities in the future. Uh, so yeah, a bunch of new things to get onto, but also a little surprise from Yoaf, I believe. Not really surprised, but uh, <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, we'll talk a bit about the largest image on the web. Yeah, I guess that's not a surprise. But no. anyway, before we get on to image bloat, we do want to talk about image formats, because we've had a lot of questions about this, uh, in particular WebP. Uh, a question from Eugene Kopich asking about WebP support in Safari. Uh, now, Yoav, yeah, I know you don't work on Safari or WebKit, but uh, any word on this? Um, nothing in particular. Uh, so iOS 10. Uh, one of the betas introduced WebP support, uh, and right. then it got pulled out. And yeah. I know that the WebKit code base has uh, WebP support for various ports uh, that are using it, but not for the Safari port of WebKit. Mm -hmm. I'm hopeful that with the recent uh, development of support from Firefox and Edge, the WebKit team, the Safari team, will reconsider and potentially add support in the future. Fantastic, but, yeah. It would be great to see that. I mean, one obvious uh, point to make here is uh, that you know it's really easy to uh, to code for WebP with fallbacks. We've actually had a question about this from uh, Victor Alenichak. Um, just wanted to show some uh, code on screen now that uh, in this example uh, shows how you can code for a uh, transparent image uh, using WebP but with a PNG fallback. Really simple stuff there. Um, also had questions about sort of successes and you know the future of WebP. Um, a question here from Ryan Townsend. Uh, now, I've kind of heard about like AVIF and other stuff, but I don't really know much about it. Yoaf, please, could you tell us more about the future formats? Sure. Uh, so yes, AVIF is a still image format that's based on the AV1 uh, video codec. Right, right. And AV1 introduces a lot of new and exciting uh, compression concepts that allow us to get significant uh, compression gains. At the same time, when looking at images on the web, uh, AV1 and has a trade-off when it comes to decoding speed. And the uh, decoding right. cost of uh, <laughs> AVIF images is a bit too high to be usable for images on the web. Right. Uh, okay. At the same time, maybe there are some things to learn from those uh, compression concepts so that they can be applied to some yeah. future format. Yeah, I look forward to seeing what's happening there. I mean, it's really interesting some of the stuff, you know, in still image uh, technology that we're getting kind of off the back of, uh, you know, research into video compression. So I look forward to see where that goes. Yeah. Um, we've also had several questions about SEO. Uh, so search engine optimization for images. A question from Thomas uh, asking uh, about SVG. Is SVG uh, SEO friendly? And we've actually been to the, uh, the search team here and asked them, and yes is the answer. SEO is great for SVGs. Um, SVGs uh, will get indexed and appear on Google Images just like any other image. Just bear in mind that you know text in the code in an SVG is not indexed. So if you're using links and stuff in the text in the code for an SVG, that won't be indexed. Um, just bear in mind that uh, inline images with SVG don't uh, get indexed. So uh, just be aware of that when you're using SVGs. 
But uh, also wanted to, to mention, you know, that thinking about this from an accessibility perspective, how you can make images more accessible. And, uh, yeah, we also had a question for from Thomas on yeah. that re related to the alt attribute that's and right. whether that's mandatory for SEO purposes. Yeah. And I guess that beyond just SEO, it's mandatory for accessibility purposes because we really want all users to be able to understand our images. So the alt attribute is fundamental for that. Mm -hmm. And also for SEO, uh, Google search doesn't look into, doesn't try to decipher text inside of images. Gotcha. And yeah, the alt attribute is what it's uh, yeah, basing. Still the way to go. Yeah, indexing on. So that's yeah. definitely the way to go. Yeah, I mean, one thing that I've noticed is, you know, that uh, if you're adding a text layer over a photographic image, it can like really mess up your chances of getting good compression on that uh, image. So yeah, the short answer is keep your text and your images separate and you get better SEO and better accessibility. Um, so moving on to some uh, other topics, actually, thinking about best practice, um, going back to Victor's question, just want to show you a little extra markup uh, does some more stuff here. So using uh, source set to enable the browser to choose uh, different image sizes depending on the viewport. And for bonus points, you can use the uh, sizes attribute to actually specify the size of the uh, image element that uh, is in the display. So two really useful attributes there. So as you can see from the developer tools, uh, Chrome is using the WebP and Safari is falling back to the JPEG. Now, we've also had a question from Eric Lawrence about WebP, um, pointing out that uh, you know, some sites uh, on Google uh, don't use WebP. Um, we had a check, and you know, most Google sites are using WebP. I mean, inevitably, some sites uh, you know, haven't prioritized adoption of WebP. I mean, I think that's just the way for a lot of organizations. So next question was about animated GIFs. Uh, the question is, you know, should we stop using animated GIFs? And the answer is yes, yes. Uh, there are great tools like FFmpeg that make it really easy to encode from animated GIFs to a better format. And as you can see from the HTML markup here, it's really easy to use video for a much better alternative to an animated GIF. Just bear in mind that we have the uh, muted attribute here which means that uh, you know, autoplay is not blocked uh, from platforms that otherwise would stop that. Yeah, and one more point related to animated GIFs. Yes. If you have many different animated GIFs on the same site, it might be better to convert them to an animated WebP rather than mm -hmm. a video, uh, because videos are by default routed through a GPU, and that can cause performance problems if you have too many of them on a single site. Right, yes, thanks so. for reminding us, yeah. So yeah, video or animated WebP. OK, so since I managed to get Yoaf into the studio, I, like, I get to ask a question, uh, I believe. Anyway, so my question really was about image dimensions. You know, Back in the day, we were told, don't put height and width on HTML elements. Um, since then, I've heard about like intrinsic size and aspect ratio. You know, what's going on? Uh, tell us the news. <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, so. Adding width and height uh, as part of markup yeah. was inherently so, like was something that was considered uh, to go against uh, responsive web design. Yeah, that's right. You don't Fixed. really know what the domain dimensions of yeah. the image will be because uh, they de can vary based on the viewport. Um, at the same time, that resulted in janky layout and reflows mm. once the browser actually got the real image dimensions when yeah, he had downloaded sure. the image. So uh, in order to resolve that, the Chrome team had a proposal for an intrinsic size attribute, okay. uh, which um, would give the browser ahead of time the intrinsic dimension of the image or its aspect ratio. And that will enable the browser to get layout right, right. the first the So first to work out the height based yeah. on the knowing the width. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but feedback we got from the Mozilla's from Mozilla yeah. folks was that they're not super excited about adding yet another yeah, attribute on image yeah, yeah. Uh, when we already have the width and height attributes. Yeah. Uh, so if uh, we will slightly change mm -hmm. the way that people do responsive design and have them also define like both the width and the height at, uh, as part of CSS, 
that would mean that we can use the width and height attributes in order for the browser Not. to know what the intrinsic yeah. dimensions are or what the aspect ratio is. Yeah. So the browser can use that in order to determine the initial uh, intrinsic yeah. dimensions, gotcha. which are currently fixed, but will be based on the those attributes yeah. up until the point where the browser actually downloads the image nice. and knows what the final dimensions nice. are. So I can use that to get the aspect ratio without having to first download the image. Yes. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. And Yoaf, while you're here, uh, I also wanted to ask about lazy loading. Uh, can you tell us where that's going? So people have been using JavaScript in order to lazy load images yeah. for the longest while. And now finally, uh, starting from Chrome 76, that exists in native. And all you have to do is just add uh, the loading attribute with a lazy value, mm -hmm. and the browser will do the right thing and only load the image when the user is very likely to actually see it. Yeah. Um, similar to JavaScript-based lazy loading, you don't want to do that for images that are very likely to already be in the viewport, mm -hmm. uh, but mostly focus on images that are not likely to be in the initial viewport, but the user yeah, yeah. will scroll to them eventually yeah. in some cases. Yeah, oh, that's great to see. Um, and yeah, one last thing. We did uh, promise you uh, earlier um, to find out about the biggest image on the web. <laughs> What's the deal, Yoaf? Uh, sure. This? So we How sent, do we know? So we sent out the, this tweet yeah, uh, yeah, related yeah. to images uh, <laughs> and uh, asked Chrome hashtag. And Adi Asmani, our colleague, asked, yeah. what's the best image uh, on the of web? Course, of and course. folks in the community obviously, like, obviously immediately said, the biggest one. And Paul Calvano and Rick Viscomi <laughs> uh, digged up uh, that data from the HTTP archive and came up with a bunch of very large images. Yeah. Uh, so a 59 meg uh, JPEG, which turned out m to be mostly background noise as well as ah, a huge fantastic. image. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And Eric Portis I've seen from a few hero images like this. Yeah. yeah, Eric Portis from Cloudinary managed to downsize that a bit and compress it down to 60k, which is oh, wow. way more okay. reasonable. Yeah. Uh, and and Otherwise, there was a 30 meg uh, arrow SVG, yeah. which was mostly uh, clip path based wow. image data, which can be, you know, uh, probably 10 be downsized <laughs> yeah, yeah. into 10k. Just like an arrow. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, it's always great to hear. You know, that's like, you know, the possibilities on the web with images. I mean, you can get from like 60 meg to 60K. Um, that's actually really good news. So thank you so much, Yoaf, for being with us today. I really appreciate that. And, and thank you, everyone, for all your questions. Uh, you can post more questions using the Ask Chrome hashtag on Twitter, or you can just post comments uh, on this video on YouTube. So thanks so much, and thanks again, Yoaf. Thank you. Goodbye.